What's going on guys, this is Rob and I am back and Magneto is back because we are here with the conclusion of the resurrection of Magneto. So now that he's back from the dead, he's basically been told everything that's happened by storm. Orcus attacking the mutant population, 250,000 some odd mutants who are all believed to be dead, that those mutants who do remain on earth are just fleeing for their lives. They're launching attacks where they can, when they can. Cyclops has his forces. He's taking pot shots and Iron Man is building Mysterium armor designed to overcome Orcus by basically using adamantium. And so what Magneto does is when he emerges, he literally says, it's strange. I don't know what hat to wear. The memory of my post-death experience already feels like a dream. I woke from it to portal energy on my skin instead of the yolk of a golden egg, to ocean's blue instead of Krakoa's green and Arako's red, to the uneasy understanding that everything had changed. Because again, something to remind you guys of, for those of you guys who forgot, Magneto died during Judgment Day. So he died before the whole attack by Orcus and everything. The last time he was alive, mutants were living on Mars, mutants were living on Earth. Things could be going better, but they weren't that bad. Everything has gone to pot like that as far as he's concerned. And so what you get is this amazing moment because when Magneto emerges here, he goes straight to the prison cells in this Orcus facility that hold all these different mutants, right? Thousands of mutants are here. Now we don't know everything that Orcus is doing with them. We know that they were experimenting on them, but as far as we're aware, there are no Omega level mutants here. These are just different mutants with varying degrees of power, which may or may not be interesting. But as far as Magneto is concerned, a mutant is a brother or a sister. Therefore, they deserve to be freed and removed from the oppression of Orcus. And so immediately he shows up and starts taking these guys out like right off the bat. But that's not the cool part because what ends up going on is one of these guys say, get squad zero here, right? Squad zero is the one that we need. And so what happens is that when this squad emerges on the scene, they basically start baiting Magneto. He asks the question, why hold back? Because even among the powerful, I am power and power carries weight power makes ripples in the world. My action, my inaction, my conscious example, my unwitting inspiration, I help, I harm, I save life, I end it. What should my choice be? What is my responsibility? Which hat should I wear? Which Magneto will I be? Now, this is one of the most important things here, right? Yes, he is kind of speaking in rhyme and so on. But one of the cool things that we saw in the last video that we covered, which again, you'll see a link to the playlist if you need to get caught up, but we'll also make a full story video, that he was basically mulling over who he had previously been. Make no mistake, if this was like the old school Magneto back in the day, these guys would have been killed on the spot and he wouldn't have even batted an eye, right? He would have just been like, and you're dead now, moving on, right? And that would have been it. But he's grown a lot more patient. He has really seen the error of being so reckless and letting hate and anger blind him. And so because of this, he's asking this kind of philosophical question, do I want to be the person that I was before? Or do I need to be a better version of myself? The reality here is there's just kind of like three facets to him, right? Three versions of himself. And that's even what he mulls over here, that when these guys basically teleport in, that he realizes they're baiting him, that they're trying to get him to attack. And right off the bat, he's like, something's off here right? Like taking time to think instead of just reacting, he realizes something's not quite right. And he says, my instinct tells me to wait and to pull my magnetic field as tight as possible. So these guys fire off and he stops the bullet about half an inch from hitting him. And that's when he realizes he is in the middle of a trap. And he says those magnetic fields that he was feeling, they were not weapons, they were sensors. And what he realizes here is that it's a perfect trap, right? A countermeasure for everything that he's capable of. Because what these guys say, right? They say these suits detect changes to local magnetic fields. They are very sensitive. And if any fancy magnetic powers touch them, nerve gas, floods, 
every single room in this prison. So Magneto's kind of faced with what seems to be this impossible choice. Either he lets them kill him almost immediately after coming back to life and potentially serve as some kind of a martyr, which may or may not work for the mutant population. If anything, the death of Magneto, considering the role he has, how powerful he is and how he's revered, it would probably demoralize the mutant population, to be honest. Either he lets them kill him or he kills these guys and kills thousands of mutants in the process. And that's when he kind of mulls over this philosophy. How would the Magneto of old react? Unthinking rage, single-minded vengeance, at any cost, even these innocent lives. And what would Charles Xavier do? Embrace self-sacrifice, fall nobly upon the offered sword. But these are hypotheticals. In the here and now, I see only one way to proceed. And what this does is it establishes just how powerful Magneto is, right? In the years of Marvel Comics, Magneto's power is usually done in some crazy grandiose display of power, right? There was an Exiles comic where he basically killed the world. You look at stories like Fatal Attractions where he basically, like, launches an EMP that takes down power to every electrical source on the planet Earth. You see these crazy things. But while this display of power is small, it's insane. And it's probably the most crazy thing that he's ever done, right? He says, tripping the sensors will send an electrical impulse down a wire to a circuit almost instantaneously almost this move will require confidence and strength an experienced mind in a vital body it would not require finesse but anything that did would be too slow i will have to remember their names there's the sudden sound of every metal component inside the suits every wire every circuit crushing down into five small dense cores the process ignores the five bodies inside the suits the sound is wet unlike electricity in a wire mutant power is instantaneous the thing is done so quickly that no signal escapes no gas is triggered and yet it was the perfect trap with no way out neither white nor black then. And so literally what Magneto did, using his powers, he condensed their suits down to just these balls, as small as they could get. But it happened so fast that the electrical signals in the circuits didn't have time to react, right? This is absolutely nuts, right? It's crazy. And you kind of have to imagine these guys probably didn't feel anything. This happened before they even realized what was going on, right? It's like that submersible that went down to see the Titanic and imploded, right? It imploded faster than the brain can process pain. That's literally what's happening here. Right? And it's just this crazy, mind-blowing thing that Magneto's powers are so fine-tuned, he could kill these guys and destroy their suits before they could even send an electrical signal to a wire. It's nuts. It's probably the most insane display of his power that I've ever seen. And so once these guys are dead, of course, these cell doors open and everybody greets Magneto as a savior. But recognize this it makes him kind of uncomfortable because it's not something he's readily familiar with. Even when you go and you look at Jonathan Hickman's run on the X-Men, starting with House and Powers of X, running all the way up to Inferno, Judgment Day, all that kind of stuff, Magneto, even during that time, was there, but kind of not there. He still had the sort of haughty kind of attitude that we were the most familiar with with his character from years past, right? That phenomenal moment from, I think it's the first issue of House of X, maybe Powers of X, when he meets with those humans and he tells them, you humans love your symbolism and we mutants have our own nation now. So I want you to understand and I need you to understand you have new gods now. It's just that kind of thing. Magneto of old, very much the same way. Bow before my power. I am Magneto, the unstoppable. And sure, I'm not really doing it justice. <laughs> right? But the fact remains here that Magneto, historically speaking, is a character that leads mutants into war by any means necessary. He will try to achieve his goal. He's very much like that quote of Dr. Doom from Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers. May there be suffering and woe to all who stand in my way. But when he's suddenly greeted as a savior, oh my God, Magneto, you saved us. If it hadn't been for you, we would never be alive. 
it sort of makes him feel a little off because he's not used to hero worship due to the fact that he did something beneficial for the world. He's used to hero worship because he's basically followed by radicals and extremists who believe in going to the very ends and whatever those ends happens to be that it justifies whatever means got them there. So what you end up getting in the aftermath of this is of course you have Adam Brashear the Blue Marvel and you have Storm who are working together alongside Taya, the mother of Galactus. Yes, we will make a video on her. You guys have been screaming about it in the comments section of the last video. <laughs> yes, we will do it. Uh, but of course they open a portal which basically gets all these mutants to freedom and then those Orcus soldiers who weren't killed are all basically taken to a detention center. But then a Stark Sentinel arrives on the scene. And this is where things get really interesting because we're kind of getting a taste, right? You guys are probably noticing here. We're getting these incremental, you know, little tidbits of what Magneto's capable of and what he is now. But this is an instance where it moves away from Magneto Magneto as a solo act, and it focuses on Magneto as part of a team effort, because these Stark Sentinels were designed by Tony Stark, and as we know in Avengers vs X-Men, Tony Stark did kind of technically get the best of Magneto, but only because Magneto was distracted, right? Like, in a real fight, Magneto would obliterate Tony Stark, and it wouldn't even be close. <laughs> Those books were cooked so bad, it wasn't even funny. But the bigger point here is this right? These Sentinels were designed to take all comers, shy of Franklin Richards, who can warp reality or something along those lines, most mutants will fall to the power of these Stark Sentinels nine times out of ten. Even when Storm launches an attack using the lightning and everything, because Magneto's magnetism won't work, the Stark Sentinel responds in saying, a countermeasure has been deployed. Yes, you are a goddess, you can control the weather, and that's cool and everything, but like, how do you fare against Sonics? Of what use is all your power when your brain is scrambled to mush because your ears won't stop ringing? And that's exactly what it does. It's a very subtle way to overpower Storm. Adam Brashear steps in and Adam Brashear goes to attack the Stark Sentinel. And in turn, Adam Brashear is overcome by the Stark Sentinel again using technology developed by Tony Stark. Now, one of the things that's cool here is that Magneto even comments on that, that Adam Brashear has never truly trusted the Avengers. And that makes perfect sense, right? We know that his trust with the Avengers was a little sketchy, even with his like original story from Kevin Grievous, right? The old Adam, the legend of Blue Marvel story. It was really more because he saw the Avengers as a somewhat nefarious group that would like create the rules but then break the rules at the same time. You know, like, hey guys, the city is saved, right? The city's totally destroyed. Destroyed, <laughs> that kind of thing. But a bigger point to be made here is during Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers run, when Adam Brashear learned about the Illuminati and the fact that they were destroying worlds, that he was kind of flabbergasted that they never came to him, one of the smartest men in existence that could easily find a way to bring an end to the incursions, which in fact, if my memory serves me correctly, he figured out a solution on the spot. Right, just a way to end it, right? A way to keep that from happening. But the larger point here is he's never really trusted them. And so the fact that Tony Stark was basically developing Sentinels using technology and information for the purpose of neutralizing someone as powerful as Adam Brashear kind of solidifies the viewpoint that the Avengers cannot really be trusted. But in the midst of this great big huge fight, you basically have these kind of uh, citizen journalists who show up here. They're not really bad guys, right? In fact, they stand for mutant liberation now which is to say they basically made their way to this Orcus facility for the purpose of exposing it, likely uploading the videos on YouTube and making the general public aware of what was going on. And so now the battle's kind of twofold, that you have Storm and Magneto and Blue Marvel that have to defeat the Sentinel, but at the same time, prevent these innocent people from being killed. Because the response of the Sentinel is, I'll just destroy those guys, and that'll be the end of it. It's a really interesting scenario here, because in their pursuit of truth, they've actually made the situation worse. They've complicated everything. And so Magneto just kind of grabs, you know, these pieces of the Orcus facility and turns them into a giant, you know, a couple of giant fists and starts pummeling the Sentinel. But he realizes that because of how durable it is, that it's not going to be defeated in that way. And so what he does is he says, Aurora, Adam, to me, we're going to make a human mutant circuit. This will require absolute trust in both of them. And when the question's asked, what kind of circuit? The response of Magneto, what else? An electromagnet. Call it a new spin on an old trick. Now Storm realizes right off the bat that if he does this, 
it will kill him potentially, right? It has the ability to destroy him, to channel that much power, all the power of Adam Brashear, a living antimatter reactor, keeping in mind, this guy was powerful enough to destroy a facsimile of Shumagorath, and that's no small thing. A facsimile of Shumagorath is enough to kill the Avengers without breaking a sweat. The power of Storm, we already know just from the various stories that have been told, she's arguably, short of Franklin Richards, the most powerful mutant on the planet Earth in Marvel Comics. But what's the response of Magneto here? Haven't you heard? I am not afraid of a life that ends. And so Storm calls on all her power, Magneto calls on all his power, and then literally Magneto says, the energy flow is unrelenting. The pain is unimaginable. So is my rage. I cannot touch the Sentinel magnetically. I cannot peel it open with my mind until the false face falls away, revealing what Orcus made, what they may have fed the entire world to in service of their hatred, the living form of fascism's ultimate lie, that there is anything underneath the facade of strength but a hollow shell of wires holding up a puppet that there can be any strength in forsaken common humanity. And so literally, because of this power that Magneto is bestowing both onto them as well as borrowing from them, it's enough to rip open the face of this sentinel and basically hit it directly in the head, which of course leads to the whole thing exploding and basically, you know, being destroyed and so on and so forth. The day is effectively saved. And so what you get is this kind of moment where Magneto says like, we should take this thing apart. We should study it, figure out any potential weaknesses that it may have. And while there will be time for that at some point in the future, Storm is met by a telepathic communication from Emma Frost. And this is where things get dope. Because what she says is she's glad Magneto's back, but she needs Magneto's help in rescuing her husband. Now, those of you guys who have been following Fall of X, you guys know who Emma Frost's husband is. But for those of you guys who were not following the fall of X, Emma Frost is married to Tony Stark. So what Magneto has to do is travel with Storm and Adam Brashear to rescue Iron Man so he can use his Mysterium armor and help the Avengers take out the threat of Orcus. So the question has to be asked, what's going to happen when these two guys meet? taking into account the fact that they are, by all standards of measurement, mortal enemies. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, and I will catch you all later. Peace.